Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In a 2005 interview, Bill Maher made the claim that Christians suffer from a neurological disorder. Jesse Ventura, former professional wrestler, former governor of Minnesota, once claimed that religion is a crutch for the weak-minded. You go on the internet today and you look at uh, news stories and you read comments people post and you will see countless examples of people calling Christians ignorant, unenlightened, dumb. Throughout history, Christians have been physically persecuted as well. They've been thrown into prison, they've been tortured, and some even have been put to death. And that still happens today in places in this world. Does that surprise you? How about when it hits a little closer home? How about when it's a, a friend or a, a co-worker who, who makes fun of you because of your faith? Does that surprise you? Well, today as we take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul says, don't let it surprise you. Don't be surprised when you face ridicule in this world because of your faith. You see, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to a group of Christians living in a city called Thessalonica, and from all outward appearances, things weren't going well. Paul had spent some time there. He spent about three weeks with them, but persecution, physical violence against him and the other Christians there broke out, and it was so bad for Paul that he had to leave. And now he's concerned about them. So he's uh, writing letters to them, but he's also hearing some very good reports about these Christians, many of them new Christians, facing this persecution. They're standing firm. They're growing in their faith. And they're looking to Jesus as they face these problems. That's why in the opening verses of our lesson, Paul writes this, We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. Now certainly the persecution that these Christians were going through was much different than the persecution that you and I go through in 21st century America. I don't know anyone who has been physically harmed because of their faith, although I'm sure it happens sometimes. And yet it's still hard, isn't it? It's hard when you turn the television on at night and you watch a show that, that mocks your Christian faith. It's hard when you're at work and you hear someone call you a fool because of your faith. It's hard when your own family members and your own friends have no idea why you spend so much time with Jesus. Jesus. what does Paul say? He says, don't be surprised by it. It's going to happen. Or maybe we think of uh, the words that Jesus once said to his disciples, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. But then the point of our lesson for today is this. Don't be surprised by it, but also don't worry about it. And here's why. Paul says, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. And then he goes on and he explains when that's going to happen. He says, this will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. What's your initial reaction when someone mocks you because you're a Christian? Well, 
if you're like me, your first reaction is to get angry and upset about it. But Paul says, don't worry about it. Don't worry what people might say to you. Don't worry what people might do to you because there's going to be a day when they will have to answer to God for what they've done. And there will be a day when God will give you relief from the ridicule you face. Either it's going to happen when you die or it's going to happen when Jesus returns on Judgment Day in glory. Today we celebrate the last judgment. We celebrate Jesus returning again in glory. Does that day ever scare you a little bit? Or does the thought of hell ever scare you? We get a glimpse of what hell is in our lesson for today. Paul says they will be punished. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. Does the thought of hell send shivers down your spine? And then you remember what we heard first of all in our section this. God is just. You see, God is not just some grandfatherly figure up in heaven looking down at this world of sin and says, well, I guess people will be people. It's not really a big deal. It's not really a big deal how they live their lives. I'm going to take it easy on them. No, the Bible says God is just. God hates sin. God can't stand sin. God can't tolerate sin, not even a little. And then I look at my life, and you look at your life, and what do you see? You see the opposite of just. You see sin. You see sin in our words, the hurtful words we might say to one another. You see sin in the thoughts, the dirty thoughts that might run through our minds. You see sin in our actions, in the lies that we tell, in our pride and arrogance, thinking we're better than other people. And to think about standing before a just God on Judgment Day and taking a look at our lives, that's a scary thought. So how could a just God welcome sinners like you and me into heaven? Well, it's because he punished someone else. He punished someone else in our place, his own son, who did what you and I couldn't do and who did what you and I needed to be done. See, it was Jesus who, without blemish, without one mess up, lived a perfect life, flawlessly, keeping God's commands perfectly. And it was God's son, Jesus, who gave that life for you on the cross. He traded his life for your life. See, at the cross, we see both God's justice and God's love collide. We see God's justice. The sin of the world is punished. God is serious about sin. So where do we see God's love? It wasn't you or me who were there. It was Jesus. And it was Jesus who has taken away your sin. The punishment is gone forever for good. And that's why when you think about the last day, or when you think about your death, when you will stand before God's throne, find comfort in these words from God when he says, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. You will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God on that last day because through faith in Jesus, you have received the blessings that he has won. Forgiveness of sins, peace with God, eternal life in heaven. You will be counted worthy on the last day because through faith in Jesus, he has made you right with God. You will be counted worthy on that last day because Jesus 
has already made you worthy. Worthy to stand before God's throne in confidence. And so how do you prepare for the last day? You prepare for the last day by looking to Jesus, by believing in Jesus, by trusting in Jesus and him alone. And so right now in your life, when you think about the last day, when you think about judgment day, and you wonder, have I been good enough? The answer is no. But Jesus has. When you think about Judgment Day standing before God's throne and you think back to your sin, God points you to the cross of Jesus and says, There, it's gone, gone forever. And when you think about standing before the judge, know this. The judge loves you. The judge has adopted you into his own family through faith in Jesus. Your judge is preparing a place for you in heaven. So don't be surprised when you face ridicule in this world, but also don't be surprised when Jesus comes and takes you home to heaven. So what are we to do now? What are we to do now when we face ridicule in this world, when we face opposition, when people make fun of our faith, when people can be really cruel to us? Well, remember a, a number of things. First of all, remember that God is going to take care of it. That's really the point of our lesson for today. Don't worry about seeking revenge against someone. Don't worry about getting even with someone because God says they're going to have to answer for what they've done it's in my hands. I think of Joseph in the Old Testament after his brother sold him into slavery and then many years later, uh, Joseph and his brothers have a reunion and his brothers are afraid now Joseph is going to get even with us. Joseph says this to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Put it in God's hands. Let God worry about it. Also remember this. Remember what you once were. I think it's easy for Christians to look at non-Christians and look down on them a little bit. But we also need to remember that once we were separated from God too. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, God has made us part of his family, giving us the blessings that Jesus has won for us and that's to God's glory and credit, 100%. That's why the Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Remember what you once were. Also remember this. The Lord used someone in your life to bring you to faith. Maybe it was your parents who brought you to the waters of baptism as the Lord washed away your sins and made you one of his own. Maybe it was a friend or a spouse who invited you to church to come and, and hear about your Savior Jesus. Maybe it was a pastor or a teacher who told you who Jesus was and why Jesus is so important. And that's something that non-Christians need too. And if you're going to get worried about something, don't worry about the ridicule that you face. Instead, worry about their souls. Worry that they need to know that they need a Savior, and they also need to know who that Savior is. And it's the Lord who calls us to share that gospel message with them as well. And then finally, remember this. The Lord has prepared a place for you in heaven. That one day you won't have to worry about the ridicule that you face. You won't have to worry about any of the problems that you go through in this world because the Lord's going to take you home to heaven. A place full of joy and happiness forever. As our lesson says, on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed this includes you, because you believed our testimony to you.
People often use the expression, it's not the end of the world. And usually we use that expression when something bad happens and we want to keep things in perspective. And so we say, well, that was bad, but it's not the end of the world. I, I've said it and you probably have either said it or heard it. Well, as Christians, even though a part of us might be a little hesitant to say, come Lord Jesus, come on the last day, we don't need to look at the last day with fear. We don't need to look at the last day and wonder what's going to happen, but we can look at it with joy and anticipation because on that last day, our Savior is going to bring us home. And it's our Savior who has prepared us and who has made us worthy to stand before him on that day. So, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you face ridicule for your faith. It's going to happen. But don't worry about that ridicule either. Because one day Jesus is going to come and rescue you home to heaven. And until then, may we say along with the rest of God's people, come Lord Jesus, come and bring your people home. Amen.